everyone, my name is Oriana Taiwaranan and I'm the Dumbart Nova Humanities Fellow here in Education. Tonight we are celebrating the art of our time. So we're looking at art and artists that speak to relevant and contemporary issues in our world. This painting will be the focus of my talk tonight. It's by Oliver Lee Jackson and it uses spray paint as well as water-based paints on canvas. Before I say anything else, I would like us to take 10 seconds to witness this painting together in silence. And as we're coming out of that moment of silence, I would like you to think about how you feel and to hold on to that feeling I would love if you came back to it at the end of the talk. Oliver Lee Jackson says about experiencing art, you've got to learn to see, not to interfere with what the eyes are bringing. Can you see? Can you bear witness? Not interpret. Can you bear witness? Jackson says that the experience of art is, quote, not group stuff, but I'm going to respectfully disagree as we come together tonight to talk about this work. So what do you see? I would love to hear some of your contributions. A man. So we see a central figure here, and it looks like a man. Anything else? Silver snakes. Silver sort of snakes. He's using the spray paint to make these free-form um, gestures around the canvas. Yes. I see a rabbit. You see a rabbit. Sometimes they over here. Some people think it looks like pointing, but absolutely we have a sort of shape that's in the right here. Yes. A circle or an egg? We see a circle or an egg around this bottom figure here. Those are the back. We have a central figure who's fallen and covered in blue, and then this figure is kind of hovering over it. The feet down here are light. Anything else? What are we seeing? Energy. Energy. This expression of energy and movement in the watercolor, in the spray paint, radiating outwards. Great. Anything else before we move on? Other figures. Other figures. Other figures around the edges here that are contoured in red and beautiful colors. These figures happen to be pointing, crouching. And my next question for you is, if you're willing, could you please take on the stance of one of the figures in this painting? There's a purpose to this. <laughs> now, think about where the tension is in your body, where it wants to move. Think about what's relaxed. And I would love to hear from some of you. How do you feel? You can move out as you speak. <laughs> How did you feel taking on that pose? Ready to move. Tense. Ready to move. Ready to pounce. A lot of these figures are poised. Their knees are bent. They're on the edge of something. So there's a lot of energy in this painting as we identified. Now the reason I asked you to take on these poses is because Jackson uses these poses as a grammar in his visual language. Oliver Lee really Jackson uses these abstract figures, which he calls paint people, as the phonemes of human embodied experience. So instead of a kind of unit of sound that we use in language, he is using each different pose as a distinct experience of the human body. As we look at these appendages of the paint people, we understand what it might mean for our body to try to take on that pose. Jackson says, quote, if I use an image of a human figure in which it's seated and the arms hold the knees, everyone can feel that that's a turned in feeling. That's a closed form. It starts to feel grave, solemn. That's a gesture that communicates itself. This use of the human form as a kind of formal, emotive tool, rather than a narrative tool, is characteristic of the neo-expressionist movement, which was developed in the 70s and 80s and rose up out of inspiration from the New York Abstract Expressionist School. And it continued in the Bay Area where Oliver Lee Jackson worked. So Jackson is using these figures as kind of grammatical rhymes across his paintings and continuing the use of the same figure. He uses stencils. Here we have this stencil of a man crouching
statue with an out extended arms drawing, and it's repeated in two different paintings. We also have this central figure in this painting repeated in another painting in this exhibition in that gallery over there, with the arms behind the back and the face darkened. This same figure is repeated in one of Jackson's sculptures, which is made out of wood. Here the head that is darkened in paint is blocked out in wood. The arms are behind the back or invisible, and the feet again are light. And so we have this kind of rhyming of human form across these paintings. And as you move through the exhibition after this, I would love for you to try to identify those repeated forms. Jackson is drawing inspiration and lifting forms out of canonical figures in Western art, such as pieces by Michelangelo, Tintoretto, Vermeer, Rembrandt, and from African art. But unlike the kind of codified, rendered forms that these are drawn from, Jackson's abstracted forms defy being pinned down. They aren't specifically raced or gendered, and therefore they defy binary categorization. Jackson is not alone in artists of color who are navigating the space in between figuration and abstraction to kind of defy that impulse to essentialize the human figure in the work of a black artist. But at the same time, Jackson isn't afraid of expressing human experience. Look, he says, I have paintings that get pretty rough. As a human being, you wouldn't want to walk into a situation like that. However, the violence is often obscure or complicated. It's not immediately apparent, just as the race of these figures in many cases is not apparent. And by creating this ambiguity of violence and race, Jackson defies the impulse to turn the black body and black suffering into a death spectacle. Jackson also rejects the label of so-called black artist before the label of artist, as he sees it as othering. Similarly, these forms address each of us on the level of our bodies, rather than being violence against the form of a sort of supposed particular other. This idea of crossing the boundaries between individual self and other rhymes across Jackson's work in this motif of the circle, this kind of egg we identified at the beginning. Jackson talks about this circle as a so-called sacred space, such as the space shared between friends or in an African drumming circle. And here we see the circle encircling the central pair, the fallen figure and the risen one. At first they might seem opposed, but in fact both have their arms behind their backs. Both have lightly bent knees and feet that are weightless. And so connected by the circle, we may start to see that the two could be same sides, two sides of the same coin. Another circle that we have is the encircling of red contoured figures around the central camp. These energetic gestures of pointing, lifting, falling, sort of hovering, create an energy and dynamism of interpersonal relationship between each of these figures. And it opens up the question of what constitutes I, us, and them. Jackson's making process also brings up a kind of energy and spontaneity. Like a jazz musician, Jackson brings years of experience and a whole library of forms to his making process while introducing specific elements of chance. Here we have the use of spray painting with this kind of indexical three-form mark that we identified earlier as these sort of swiveling forms in metallic. But in other areas, the paint is very controlled, such as right here, the spray paint is used with a stencil to block out and emphasize that edge of the drawing. Now, the drawing itself and the painting technique is also an element of that tension between control and release. Instead of having these fully rendered figures, the figures appear almost as sketches with large pieces of this white brown showing through. Since the 18th century in art history, drawing has been considered a privileged medium for its indexical relationship to the artist's hand, and this idea that it can capture the 
artist's psyche and record that. So in keeping his forms open and free, with this kind of interplay between figure and ground and sketchy, Jackson is opening up a world of possibility and play with this idea of immediacy. So why is spontaneity important? Jackson says, spontaneity, quote, has nothing to do with whether the artist spends a year on a painting or a day, whether he does it slow or fast, but rather is something that produces energy time and time again. Spontaneity is a state of opening yourself to connection with the other. It opens doors to creativity and it lets your sense of self become permeable and reform to include that sense of the other that perhaps before you saw as outside of yourself. As you move through the nation's museum tonight, I hope that you will open yourself to connection with these living pieces of culture. I hope that you will feel that you have the power to feel and experience these works as deeply as any other. Jackson assures us, quote, our experiences will tell us who the great artists are. As you move through the galleries, open yourself to connection because this is your museum, this is your art, and this is your time. Thank you all so much for your attention and all for your